Hi. In this video, we're going to take a closer look at the hypothesis test for linear correlation. So we're going to be looking at two sets of data that we believe to be linearly correlated, and we're going to test to see whether or not that correlation is truly significant or whether it's likely just due to random chance. Let's take a look. When we do a hypothesis test for linear correlation, we have the following requirements. Uh, the data we use should be taken from a simple random sample, or it should be the result of a carefully designed experiment. Uh, a scatter plot of the data should appear to show a linear relationship. Uh, a residual plot of the data does not appear to show any pattern, and we use the test statistic. It is the T statistic. Uh, the formula is R times square root of n minus 2 over the square root of 1 minus R squared. Uh, where R is the Pearson uh, correlation, the Pearson linear correlation coefficient. So in terms of requirements, uh, we're just going to check a couple of plots as we do this, and I'll show you how to do that uh, kind of as we go. Let's look at this example. A professional baseball pitcher claims that he gets better velocity on his fastball when the temperatures are warmer. The following data were taken from a random sample of games that the pitcher pitched in. So we're going to test the significance of linear correlation at the alpha equal 5% level of significance. So we want to see if there is a significant linear relationship between the game time temperature and this pitcher's maximum uh, fastball velocity. Okay, so first let's talk about the hypotheses. Um, your null hypothesis is going to be that there is no linear correlation. Oftentimes you'll see that written as rho uh, equals zero. So there is no linear correlation here between these two sets of data. Your alternate hypothesis uh, is either going to be that there is a linear correlation or we might have something more specific like there is a positive linear correlation or a negative linear correlation. And again, we kind of want to look at what's being claimed in the problem. The pitcher claims he gets better velocity when the temperatures are warmer. So in other words, as the temperature goes up, uh, he claims his velocity will go up. Okay, so his claim is that there is a positive linear correlation or uh, rho greater than zero. Okay, if there's a claim being made that uh, the response variable should go down as the explanatory variable goes up, uh, your alternate hypothesis would be negative correlation. Uh, if there is no such claim and we just want to see if there's correlation, then we would use a two-tailed test uh, and we would just say there is a linear correlation and rho would not be equal to zero. But in this example, we're claiming that there's a positive correlation, so we're going to do uh, a right-tailed test here and use an alternate hypothesis of rho greater than zero. Okay, so the next step is to go ahead and enter this data. So I'm going to go to stat and I'm going to edit and I'm going to clear out whatever's in here and I'm going to put the the response or the uh, explanatory variable in list one. So that would be the uh, your independent variable, which is game time temperature. So I'm going to put all of these values in list one. Then I'm going to go over to list two and put my uh, response variable or my dependent variable, which in this case is the fastball velocity. Okay. Now the next thing we should do is determine whether or not a linear correlation test is even appropriate. So we want to look at a scatter plot of our data to see if it appears to be uh, anywhere remotely linear. If this data doesn't look linear at all, there's really no good reason for us to do this test. So I'm going to do a stat plot, a scatter plot. I'm going to press the second button and then the y equals button. You'll see where it says stat plot above the y equals button. So I want to go ahead and select that. And then we can press enter next to the first plot. We want to turn this plot on. So I'm going to press enter where it says on. And it gives you a bunch of choices. We want to use that first choice, the one that looks like a scatter plot. Okay. Uh, your X list should be L1, your Y list should be L2, and you can use whatever kind of mark you want. Okay. So all of this looks fine. And then you're going to press graph. 
Now, chances are you might not see anything when you press graph or you'll see very little. Whenever you do a scatter plot, you're going to have to go to zoom, press the zoom button and go down to where it says zoom stat. So that's going to be choice nine. Anytime you enter data and do a scatter plot, you're probably going to have to do this. And what this will do is sort of fix the window so you get the best look at your data. Okay, so again, I press zoom. I went down to zoom stat, which was choice nine. And this is what my data looks like. Okay, so again, you can see that it appears that there could be a nice positive correlation. It appears that as we move to the right, uh, the points are uh, getting higher. Okay, so that would be a potential uh, positive correlation. So based on this, it looks like we should go ahead and uh, proceed. Okay. So the next step is press stat again, and we're going to go over to tests, and we are going to go down to the linear regression t-test. That's choice capital F. Okay, so we want the linear regression t-test, and we will press enter. X list is L1, Y list is L2, frequency is 1, and then it gives us the choice of the two-tailed, left-tailed, or right-tailed test. We want to do the right tail test because our alternate hypothesis is that rho is greater than zero. So we want to choose that third option. Okay. And then the next line says regression equation. You can leave that blank if you want. And we're going to go ahead and calculate. Okay. So this linear regression t-test on your calculator gives you lots of things. Uh, first of all, it does give you the t-statistic which in this case is 6.904, and it gives us a p-value of uh, 2.08 times 10 to the negative fifth power. Okay, and just like all the other hypotheses tests, we want to compare this to alpha. Alpha is 0 0.05. Our p-value is less than 0 0.05, which means we are going to reject the null. Okay. So if we reject the null doing uh, this particular hypothesis test, that means we do have uh, significant evidence indicating that there's a positive linear correlation between these two variables. So that's the conclusion we would make. So we could say that there is sufficient evidence to support the pitcher's claim that there's a positive linear correlation between temperature and fastball velocity. I know that's not exactly what the pitcher said, but we know we know what he meant, okay? And the evidence uh, for the from this hypothesis test supports that. Now there is one other thing we want to check. Um, it's always a good idea to look at a residual plot when you do this, just to make sure we're not uh, missing something, okay? So I'm going to show you how to do a residual plot. The first thing we want to do is uh, select quit to go back to the home screen. So quit, you'll see above the mode button. So I'm going to press second in the mode button. And then what I want to do is I want to go to the list menu, which is above the stat button. So I'm going to press second and then the stat button. And I want option number eight, uh, which says residual. Okay. So if you go ahead and select that option, it'll take you back to the home screen. And right next to this, we want to hit the store button, which is down here above the on button. So hit store. And then I'm going to put this into list three. I have my data in list one and list two. So I'm going to store the residuals in list three. So I'm going to press the second button and the three button. And I'm going to press enter. And this is going to compute all the residuals and put them into list three. So now if I go to stat and edit and look at list three, it computed the residual. So what the residual is, I'll remind you, is the difference between the actual value that I have for fastball velocity, so my actual fastball velocity and the fastball velocity that would be re predicted by my linear regression line, which we'll look at in a second as well. But uh, the idea is if we have a strong correlation, these numbers are all small. If some of these residual numbers are big, then our correlation isn't that strong. But the main thing we want to look at is if there's some sort of pattern here to the residuals, because if there's some sort of pattern, it means we might be missing something, uh, and it's not just a straight correlation between these two variables. There might be something else going on uh, that we haven't accounted for. Okay, so we want to plot these residuals. So I'm going to go back to stat plot, 
So that's second y equals. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just go back into plot one. Everything's the same, but for your y list, instead of plotting L2, I want to plot L3. So I want the x list to be L1 and the y list to be L3. This will plot the residuals. Okay, so then I'm going to hit graph. And you're going to have to do zoom stat again. Every time you change a scatter plot, you're going to need to do zoom stat again so you can see it. So again, press zoom and choose option number nine. And there is a plot of our residuals. And what we're looking for here is this should basically look random. We don't want to see any sort of, if these seem to fall in a line, uh, that would be a problem. If they kind of go up and then go down, if there's any sort of pattern here, it means we're likely missing something. Uh, in this test, but as long as it looks scattered like this one does, then uh, we're probably okay. Okay, but we do want to check that. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is go back to stat, go back to that linear regression t-test. So that was choice capital F. And keep that all the same, the same way we did it before. I just want to go back to the results because I forgot to write down a couple things. Um, the other thing the test gives us is our linear regression line. So notice at the top here it says y equals a plus bx. That means a is the y-intercept of my regression line and b is the slope. And then it gives you a and b down here. So based on this I can write the equation of my linear regression line. It's going to be y hat equals 0 0.1628 x hat uh, plus 80.2347. Okay, because my slope is B, which is 0.1628, and my y intercept is A, which is 80.2347. So this is the equation of my linear regression line. Now, if your test tells you that your correlation isn't all that strong and you're not rejecting the null, then we don't really want to use this equation for anything, okay? But because we have significant evidence to suggest that there's a positive linear correlation and the scatter plot looked linear and the residual plot didn't seem to have any pattern, that means this is going to be a good model for making predictions, okay? So if we know that the game time temperature uh, tomorrow is going to be 84 degrees, we could use this equation to predict what this pitcher's maximum fastball velocity will be. Okay, we might make a decision whether to go with him or somebody else uh, based on that. But once we've, uh, once we've solidified that there's a strong positive linear correlation here, uh, we can use this equation to do uh, make predictions. Okay, we would not want to base predictions on this model if we did not have significant correlation. And one other thing to look down here, uh, if you want to look at the Pearson correlation coefficient, that's R. That's the last thing this gives you, and it is 0 0.9. And remember, if we're close to 1 or close to negative 1, that's a strong correlation. If R is closer to 0, that's more of a weak or non-existent correlation. Okay, so we have a nice strong correlation here, an R value of 0.9 and a very small p-value, uh, which means the picture was correct. Uh, there does seem to be a positive linear correlation between these two variables. Okay, so that's an example uh, how we can do a hypothesis test to test the strength of a potential uh, linear correlation.